Have you ever wondered how and why the sacrament of the anointing of the sick came to be? Today I invite you to join with me in learning the answer to this question. The earliest evidence of the sacrament of anointing comes from sacred scripture. There are many scriptural stories of Jesus' care for sick persons. Namely, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verse 13. And the letter of James, chapter 5, verses 13 to 15. Flowing from this, there is evidence in the early church of care for the sick, especially through forms of anointing. Theologically, the church deepened its understanding of the sacrament of anointing through significant gatherings of the church, called councils, such as the Council of Florence in the 15th century, the Council of Trent in the 16th century, and the Second Vatican Council in the 20th century. The Council of Trent said that the sacrament of anointing gives the sick person the grace of the Holy Spirit, which removes any remnant of sin and both raises up and strengthens the soul of the one who is sick. This sustains the sick and helps them believe in God's mercy, helps them endure the sufferings of illness, and sometimes regain bodily health. The sacrament of anointing brings spiritual help to the sick in the face of the fears and anxieties that sickness and death can bring. With Vatican II, the Church came to understand that the sacrament of anointing was not only for those about to die, but for anyone who is sick. The Church sees the anointing of the sick as being available to people under numerous conditions, such as those who fall ill temporarily, those newly diagnosed, those who get well and then become sick again, or those whose condition worsens those preparing for surgery, the elderly who are weakened due to the effects of their age, sick children, those who have become unconscious, and those who are actively dying. It is important to understand the theological thrust of the sacrament of anointing, that the heart of it is this, discovering the presence, the revelation of God in the midst of sickness. In other words, it opens our minds, hearts, and spirits to seeing God present to us and with us in our sufferings. God does not remain aloof nor indifferent. God is not feckless. God promises His presence, and we believe that presence supports, strengthens, and blesses us. The new rite since Vatican II teaches something very important. Sickness and its sufferings are not punishments from God for personal sins. Sickness and sufferings are part of the human condition and come into the life of everyone. Also, the Church teaches that it is part of God's desire that people fight strenuously against all sickness and carefully seek the blessings of good health, so that we may fulfill our role in the human society and in the Church. This fight also engages the medical professionals who, through their skill and talents, help the sick seek better health. In addition, the Church's pastoral theology teaches that in the face of any sickness, the entire Church, not just the priest who anoints, plays a vital role in the ministry of care to the sick. If one person suffers from sickness, then the entire Church shares in that suffering so that the sick are not alone. Those who show kindness, compassion, and care for the sick, from well-intentioned family members and friends to medical experts, are viewed with great honor and share in Christ's healing and comforting ministry. There are many elements that compose the sacrament of anointing of the sick. The ordained priest is the minister of anointing. In the normative way, the priest will lay his hands upon the head of the sick person and pray in silence. The oil that is blessed and used in the sacrament is usually olive oil. The oil is blessed by a bishop at the chrism mass. If at all possible, the sick person is anointed on the forehead 
and on the palms of their hands, with a special prayer said each time. In some circumstances, the priest may not be able to anoint in these places. Thus, any suitable part of the body can then be anointed. When a person is actively dying, the celebration of viaticum, receiving Holy Communion, as spiritual food for the journey, the sacraments of reconciliation and anointing are all together a special way to care for the dying. Of course, these celebrations depend upon the state of the dying person. It is vital to remember that any pastoral, sacramental intervention that happens in the midst of dying can confer God's grace to the person, and that grace always makes up for what might be lacking due to particular circumstances. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.